watching it. Is it on? Amazing train he's ever meet. He's been on the show before with us. We always love when we have him on. So uh, let's say hello to Richie and Noel. What's going on, guys? Hey, guys. How are you today? Good, Richie. How's Florida going? Oh, it's going great. I'm over here at the workshop with Fran. Okay. It's amazing, this workshop. There's so many guys here that do 30, 40 cars. So many guys that he's helped out. I had to come here and see it myself to see the value of it. You can't believe the knowledge that's around this room from Fran to the other speakers, Terry and et cetera. And Dave, it's unbelievable. What a great event. Awesome. And so you're going to have Fran. I'm going to have Fran say a little bit to talk a little bit about this event. Awesome. Yeah. Hi, this is, this is Fran here. Uh, what's cool about this event is everybody that I have speaking in our group, they all sold cars and they're all, I mean, most of them, they're going 15, 20 cars a month. 
I mean, they jump up and sell 40 plus cars a month. They ended up taking their money invested in real estate. We got a young guy that flew down from uh, Canada. He's only 24 years old. He's been in our private training for eight months. And he said, look, I'm second on the board. I will be number one by the end of the year. And last year he traveled uh, to Europe three different times. And he told everybody that, uh, you know, he's going to Israel this year. He bought his first property for 300 grand. It's worth a half a million dollars. So oh. it's, it's not selling cars. I had the speakers up there talk about what they do to make more money selling cars and the other things they do to invest their money. And uh, what's really cool, it's, it's all true. You can talk to any speaker you want that are doing it in today's ball. So here's Richie again. Thank awesome. you, anyway. Amazing. So, Eric, this is really, really good. Uh, it's really, really amazing. I know no Walsh is there, and he's going to be talking about the walk-arounds. And it's very, very important between the walk-around, what Frank Taylor does, it's great. And I got some breaking news to say. Uh, Frank Taylor wants to be part of the Veterans Nonprofit. And we're going to have a meeting with him today, and that's really breaking news as of today. That's unbelievable. That's awesome. So let's do this. So just so everybody knows, if you didn't hear, today's topic is going to be the walk around and the demo presentation, which is why Mr. Noel Walsh is here with us with it. But before we get into Noel, I know Richie has a special video from the Jim Ellis Group that Richie's part of helping out with looking at walk around. So let's take a look at the video quick. Jim Ellis dealership compete to see who can deliver the best client experience. Contestants are judged on their ability to effectively communicate with customers interested in purchasing a new vehicle. This competition is one of the many ways Jim Ellis helps client specialists hone their skills and deliver a better customer experience. Jim Ellis is being the best. Awesome video. So as you guys see, the Jim Ellis group really goes all out when they do walk around. Well, let me go. Let's go over this product that Brandon Hadison has delivered for quite some time. And I've been working with him on it. This is a walk around with judges like Cars Direct, Automotive News, et cetera. So we have an auto group that we're going to be doing this in March. We go on live with cameras, okay? And after that live, we hit custom audience, all right? Our consumers in the market using IHS, this product. So this is very lucrative, this walk around, because it's training, it's judges, and it's also selling cars on Facebook. It's a very, very interesting product that we have developed. That's awesome. No, what are your thoughts on that? 
you know, I thought it was uh, – <clears throat> It was a great video. It was very professional. I think more dealers should do that and have that contest. I think there's, a, especially in today's age, I think it's more important now than ever for salespeople to have the product knowledge, to be able to give a effective dynamite presentation, and to work the process of the walk around in a way that keeps that flowing, keeps the imagine the customer's imagination going. And I, I think that uh, we 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 feed off our peers. We grow from our peers more than anything. So when you see people that work at the same dealership or the same dealer group giving dynamite presentations like that on film that you can learn from, then it gives uh, the, the rest of the staff the opportunity for something to, to uh, try, and, try and achieve and try and get better at. So I think that's, I think that's incredible. 100%. Richie, what, what's your biggest thing with the, with the walk-around competition? Why do you think it really um, helps improve the overall dealership? It's, it's very simple. You have the judges, but you have the salespeople do it. So the salespeople are like on stage. They go out and study about it. You increase their enthusiasm, and you get people involved. It's like a workshop getting salespeople involved for engagement. Well, the walk around is getting everybody involved that's in sales to really polish up because they want to win. It's a contest, right, with judges. You know, so that's the beautiful thing about it. And if you look at this video, how the video was done and everything was really down, I had to get, you know, approval to share this on my live, but, you know, Brandon was part of it. We all helped him out doing this. And now we got a major order group, all right, uh, out on the West Coast that is going to be doing this in March. And pretty soon you guys are going to start seeing who it is out there. We're going to start promoting it. The biggest thing is the salespeople's enthusiasm grows so much. And they go out of their way to learn more and more because it is a competition and there is an award at the end and there's, you know, stuff that we do and gifts that we do. And it's a great way to create enthusiasm and a learning curve and seeing what each every other salesperson does on walk around, especially on the CPO walk around. You know, a lot of customers come in on CPO and the average salesman doesn't do a walk around. Well, the Jim Ellis book takes a new car or a CPO the same way. And that's what's different about it. You know, and it creates enthusiasm. I mean, we all know what enthusiasm does to the sales department. It just creates more sales. 100%. I mean, if you look at the video, almost everyone who was in the video doing a walk around had, had exactly what you said. They had energy, excitement, enthusiasm. They had a smile on their face. So they were showing it. And that always transposes over to the customer. You agree, uh, Noel? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, enthusiasm breeds energy and it's really the energy in the showroom that, that, um, that really gets customers to want to take that next step to want to take the vehicle home. Uh, if, if there's a stale energy in the showroom, that's when it's, it's harder to get customers to stay at your desk longer or to go through the process or to commit to taking the vehicle home that day to when there is energy and enthusiasm and someone gets a dynamite presentation they really feed off of that. In fact, I was just doing walk around presentations last week in Detroit at a couple of dealerships. And it was just, it was great seeing people come up from service, the service writers, service techs, the BDC managers, finance managers, and customers alike. And I had some customers that, that would just watch my, my presentation as they were looking at that vehicle. And it really just sparked that interest. So yeah, when you can have that enthusiasm, that breeds that energy, that then for transfers throughout the showroom, throughout the other salespeople, throughout the other staff, and through the customers, that's really where you get that customer and that buying, that buying mode and excited about the product. Awesome, I agree 100%. So Ricky, we know that you're gonna be going on stage in a couple minutes. We wanna wish you the best with that. So what, what do you wanna go over with the walk around? What advice do you have for salespeople that, that you think would really benefit them the most? Well, the biggest thing is with the walk around is you, you make the customer aware of what they're getting. Awareness is key. You know, in every field, making the consumer aware 
is when they make the right decision. And in today's world in dealerships, they spend a lot of time training on products apart from sales process. Mm -hmm. And why? Because this really has increased sales, has increased their CSI, and has increased repeat business. The retention value is so much higher when a dealership does a walk around memory every six months or seven months. That dealership now has become like a five-star restaurant, a five-star hotel. That dealership has become a five-star. Once you have a five-star and once you've built this brand the way Jim Ellis Group has built it, they've hit every 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 goal that the factories ever put out for them, okay, in the Volvo stores, in the GMC stores, and they're amazing what they're doing. And it started with these walk-arounds about two years ago. No, I agree. I, I, you know, it's, you have to get the person to like you first. And I think the walk around is the easiest way to get that experience is to really break the ice and get them, you know, get the customer engaged, laughing with you, joking around. Um, uh, the walk around, Eric, works like this. Why did we? Why are we using life today? We're using life today because of the engagement, right? Where people engage on live more than when you write content and image, right? That's why we're using it. The walk around creates engagement with the customer. Yep. Okay. And that's the same way. That's why more and more stores are doing walk arounds. I mean, the first one of the first walk arounds was uh, Asbury group, all right, that Brandon did the walk around there. We got the video on there. All right, that happened five, six years ago, and it, it started with that. That was the first store that actually did this walk around and that in this magnitude. So, you know, it's really a positive thing, this walk around. It creates great energy for your showroom. It creates great energy for the consumer, and it really shows the consumer the product they're buying. Great words. Richie, I know, like I said, you, you could be going on your show. What, um, where do you want to leave off with? We want to wish you yeah, luck. I want to, I want to leave off with thanking Noel for coming back to the show. He is such a team player with us. He's always there for us. And I thank him so much. I don't consider, I consider him a good, good friend and he is amazing trainer and that's a guy that you guys got to listen to i did one youtube on his uh service thing he's amazing he's very well very well fit knows about facebook knows about all this but the most important is he really is a really good trainer sales process knows every aspect of the business and my hat goes off to him and I keep, and I just don't say that about a lot of people, but one of the guys that I say that about all the time is no wash. And no, thanks a lot. Enjoy the show with Eric, and have an awesome day, Richie. Before we let you go, we want to I say appreciate that. We want to wish you good luck. We know you're going on stage soon. You don't need it. Everyone knows that you're a master when it comes to training. And without you, none of this would have been possible. And we also want to thank Mr. Fran Tail for putting together such a great seminar that's teaching people how to sell 30 or more cars. Oh, what do you awesome. got on Mr. Uh, Fran's events? I know you've been to a couple of them, right? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've spoken at five or six events. And, you know, there's uh, there's always great speakers. There's always great content shared. It is, uh, it's nice how he does have salespeople up there who are doing it. In fact, the first couple I spoke at for Fran I was selling at the time, or I was doing my training and selling both at the same time. And so there's a lot to be taken away from there. And one of the greatest things about going to any event is, is the relationships that you build. You know, sometimes we have these, I just had the opportunity to meet Ali Rita. And him and I have probably talked on the phone 40 times, and I've had him on five or six of my lives. But we had never met in person. So even though sometimes we're friends with these people online, we've, we've talked to them numerous times. We engage, we have a relationship with them. Sometimes it's actually going there, looking in their eyes and shaking their hands. But anytime you have the opportunity to go see one of Fran's events, uh, there's always fresh content added. There's always a lot of the, the basics that we should all be following added. And there's always a lot of good talent to give you different aspects of the car business and retail selling industry. 100%. Well, Richie, we wish you luck if you're still on the line. And let's take a look at Mr. Noel Walsh's video on why qualifying a customer is going to pay off in the end.
Noel Walsh here with Conquer You. And this series of videos, I'm going to talk about how the high quality experience creates the high paying ending. Customers want an experience, okay? They aren't coming to see you like an amusement park or a zoo or a museum. They're coming to see you for an expensive product that they did preliminary research on online, that they read some facts on, read some articles on, got some feedback from friends, family, neighbors, on social media. They know a little bit about the vehicle that they're interested in. Now what they want is they want a salesperson to be that sales professional to create a high quality experience. We want to make an experience that they are comfortable going through, that they enjoy, that answers their questions, that gives them the facts and the value that they need to make the right decision, which therefore makes it a high paying ending for you, the salesperson. When you've done everything right, money no longer becomes as much of a factor but you want to make sure that you did everything right creating that experience showing that you're the professional that you know what you're talking about and therefore you will be able to ask for all the money you'll be able to ask for the asking price negotiation and closing are a lot more smooth when you create a high quality experience you will have a high paying ending Noel Walsh, Conquer You. Noel, tell me how that plays into creating an excellent walk around and demo. Tell me the reason why that, that it all ties in. You know, it, absolutely, it does all tie in, and, and great choice of video. It's hard to believe that video is almost four years old now, um, but as many videos as I've shot, there's, I've got them all over the place. Um, but it, it is an experience because, you know, when I, I was doing my presentations and walk-arounds, I did 12 walk-arounds at two dealerships in three days. It was the same four vehicles, and it was what me and the dealer principal talked about. He really wanted his staff to know. But, you know, if we just sit there and, and data drop, we don't investigate and identify really what the customer is looking for. You know, what, what I talked about often is, you know, ask the customer what they like best about their current vehicle. Ask them what they wish their current vehicle had. Ask them what features, technology, benefits they would be willing to invest in in their new vehicle. So understand this. I believe start at the front of the vehicle. Talk about, talk about the exterior looks. That's the first thing that people see is the exterior looks. Now, obviously, they spend 95% of the time in their vehicle and seeing the vehicle from the inside out. But starting off in the front, knowing what they're interested in because you investigated and identified what they were willing to invest in, talking about some of the, the attractive features, the new look, um, model upgrades, and then keeping a flow to it where you're sharing the right information and you're not giving a lecture. See, on a, on a walk around, on a presentation, we want to keep that moving because when it's moving, their imagination's moving. Where I did also, I did four hours of classroom training at each store both days. And it's harder sometimes sitting up there in a, in a small conference room, just sitting there because it's, it's more of a lecture. Even if I'm keeping the audience engaged and, and I'm, you know, and I'm stating good facts, I'm sharing great content, I'm reminding them things that they should be doing that they, maybe they forgot about doing. I'm sharing things that people are doing across the country and having good, good results with. So I think more than anything is, is make it fun. Like you said, if, if you've got a great sense of humor, make them laugh. If you're a joke teller, tell jokes. If you're good at building relationships or you like that you follow the same college football team, right? It, take that time to build that rapport still share information, but make it more of, a, of an event, an experience, rather than it has this engine, this much horsepower, this big transmission, this much gas mileage, and five powertrain options. Do you want to take it for a drive, right? And so create an experience. You know, most people like to be told what to do. So once you've, you've done this and you've been able to share your personality, that's when you can say, hey, sit inside here. Put your hands on the steering wheel. Don't you like how it's the three o'clock and nine o'clock position for the steering controls? How do you like the tufted seats? You know, this has a 10-way power driver's seat with manual lumbar. It gives you the ability to go into all those things and really take control of the process, but doing it in, in a way that you're creating an experience for the customer that they feel that it's, it's really that Ritz-Carlton experience, that, uh, that they have their own concierge, uh, you know, giving them the professional walk around, and that's what they expect from us because... We work here, we, we sell this product, they're expecting a professional presentation.
Hundred percent. So I I watched the video with you a while ago. Um, I was gonna put it on today's episode, but all I'll do is I'll tag the video and afterwards. It was what are the five points that you cover on a walk around? Yeah. So you know, and it would somewhat be a little bit different for every customer. Once again, in what I investigated and identified, but on every customer, I'm going to talk about safety points. I am going to touch base on on styling. I'm going to touch base on good customer feedback that I've had on certain features uh, or, or mass media, you know, certain features that the, that the vehicles got a lot of accolades and a lot of popularity. I remember when Ford came out with the foot activated lift gate, everybody wanted to see that. They were excited about it. New to touch base on those things. Uh, definitely touch base on cargo convenience. Uh, you know, find out what they what they do. If they're weekend do it yourselfers. Show them how that they can put the bags of mulch or the blocks or this or that in there. If if they're if they're recreational, show them how they can fit their kayak on the top or fit it in the back. If they carpool, let them see how to get into the third row seat. But I'm going to touch base on definitely safety, definitely performance, definitely styling. Um, things that a lot of my customers have shown interest in. Yeah. Uh, new technologies, you know, vehicles don't have CD players anymore. And then really the, those three questions I asked, what did you like best about your current vehicle? What did you wish your current vehicle had? And what would you be willing to invest in in your next vehicle? So each customer somewhat gets their own experience, but I know I'm going in for five. And once you do this consistently, you don't have to think, okay, I'm at number three, I'm at this, I'm at that. It's just you just guideline. go through your presentation. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's, just, it's just bullet points to hit. So I had a, uh, one of my sales reps that I was arguing yesterday, because as everyone knows, I'm still in a dealership. I am a BDC Absolutely. director of a dealership. And I was arguing with one of my newest sales reps, and we were saying, he was saying, well, I don't have to really take everyone on a test drive. I disagree. I think everyone needs to go on a test drive. What are your feelings on the demo ride? And does everyone really need a demo ride? And should they or shouldn't they? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I came from a market and I was just training in the Detroit market, which is a very unique market. It's a lot of the stores are about 80% leasing. Okay. So oftentimes you were selling these people who work for the manufacturer and they're on their third or fourth uh, Explorer or Escape or Edge or what have you. So their big thing is when there's a, a, a you know, new body style that comes out, a, a redesign, a lot of times the incentives aren't as high. Maybe the, the, the starting price went up. The programs aren't as strong as they were on the last model because the last model, they're trying to clear those out. The new model is based on supply and demand. They still don't have enough supply for the demand of that vehicle. So it's more important than ever, especially if, if you're going from a vehicle with similar options, to really touch base on what they're getting. Because if they just look yeah. at the $80, it's the $80. There's two lines. Uh, there's a line that I always grew up on You know, when I was in the prep department working for my dad at a dealership. Uh, my dad was a sales manager and I was working in the prep, but I would hear him say it all the time before I was even selling, you know, cars are the stars, right? The cars sell themselves. Most customers come in now more educated than a lot of the salespeople. They've done their 20 to 40 oh, yeah. hours of research and they're only going to visit 1.3 to 1.6 dealerships. So when you have them there, you have a captive audience, you know, the, the feel of the wheel seals the deal. Yep. Right. Because if you're just comparing, you know, Oh, I, I, I've had a, I had an escape. Okay, well, your escape's five years old. That's why I want you to sit and drive this new 2020, you know, 2020 escape. All new powertrain, better gas mileage, you know, uh, different powertrain options, plug-in options, hybrid options. Get them behind the wheel because something five years, six years newer, I don't care if you only have 20,000 miles on it, is a lot better. It's a lot tighter. It's a oh, lot yeah. smoother. So really, it's how often does somebody buy a pair of shoes without trying them on? 100%. You know, my, my brother is the one who got me into the sales business. And um, one of the things that he used to go through was, and it, it was funny, you know, people would come and he'd say, no, I don't care about the test drive. I just want to go through price and whatever else. And he, he would have a, a saying that'd be, well, you know, whether I sold you the car for a dollar or a million dollars, if you don't like the way the car drives, there's no point, you know? Right. Yeah. If you aren't comfortable in it, if it doesn't fit you, you know, a lot of these vehicles now they're made sleek uh, with the lumbar supports. Yep. So for a thin guy like me, it's good. But if, if you're a heavier person, sometimes that might, it, that might, you know, break the deal right there. You might have to go from an escape to like an edge that's a little bit wider 
a little bit more substantial um, and different things like that. So yeah, we definitely want to get them in the vehicle. That's that's where you get the the buyer's remorse. Correct. Right. Is is usually either somebody spent too much or they get it home and they're like, oh my gosh, I got the wrong thing here. Right. Yep. I don't like the way it drives. I didn't realize it has these blind spots. I mean, there's all these different factors that we're going to sit here and we're going to negotiate a six, seven year contract, two, three year lease, right? Exchange of money and, you know, high payments, $500 plus or what have you payments. The average vehicle now is $35,800 last year from what I saw. Before they even try it, try it for a test drive, it's going to become all about price. And so that's why it needs to be part of our process. Hey, folks. I, I understand you you know we're all uh, we all have uh, have limited time frames now and and I understand but hey we're we're here about to negotiate a thirty five thousand dollar vehicle do me a favor sit in the vehicle get comfortable let me take a copy of your test drive get a copy of your insurance grab my yeah. dealer plate and we'll we'll take it for a short drive and then that gives you the ability to sell hey on your commute to work do you drive in the city or do you drive on the expressway mostly? The expressway. Okay, excellent. Do me a favor. Get off on this exit right here, right? Assume and take control and get them to drive it because, you know, the cars are the stars and the feel of the wheel seals the deal. Let them use their imagination, touch points on things that they said they wanted. Boy, that steering wheel is really nice, isn't it? For a, a 1.5 liter three-cylinder engine, you can still see that that 180 horsepower is fully capable to get you on the expressway, right, for merging traffic. So touch a base on these things that they're really going to do on, the, on a daily basis. And so understand that. We understand that when we investigate and identify, and it's our job to control the process. You know, I sold 3,000 vehicles. I was in 10,000 negotiations. Um, you know, whether you just started and you've only sold 10 or 15 vehicles or you've sold 100 vehicles, there's a good chance that you've done this more, you've had more training, and most definitely you're surrounded by people that have done this enough that as sales professionals, we should be controlling the process. I think that every customer should go on a demo drive, um, regardless, even if it's just around the uh, just around the lot, if, if that's the least you can do. And you know, sometimes we have to use a little tact when we're when we're going around things. But you know, bring up things like, hey, I bet when you when you got those shoes there, did you try them on before you got them? And I would use this back years ago selling cars. And it's, it's not being rude. It's not being arrogant, but it's being tactful and making them think that, yeah, okay, I, sh I should get in. You know, I mean, yeah. the cars are wear aerodynamic now. There's bigger head restraints in cars. You don't have visibility like you used to. And so you got to get the customer comfortable in there and, and let them know this stuff and then let them know why they made those changes, right? The bigger head restraints make you safer in the event of an accident. Uh, you know, more aerodynamic is how they could take an SUV that used to get 16 and 20 miles to the gallon to 25 and 30, right? And so, you know, let them know what these are. So it's not just about the payment. It's not just about the figure. Okay, we'll call you tomorrow. Now they're going to call you, you know, they're going to go shop your competition who sells the same product across the street and then sell two other make competitors. And it's going to come down to, hey, you, you, I liked your product better, but I, I never drove it, right? But you were at 349 a month and with a 1,200 customer investment, and they were only at 338 with 800 customer investment. Yeah. So here's, a, here's another point. This is, this is more of a just a, an opinion from you. How long do you think a proper demo should take minimum? You know, after you've investigated and identified you're on the right vehicle, I think with the initial walk around presentation okay. should be five to 15 minutes. And I think a, a test drive should be 10 to 20 minutes. So I think between your walk around, showing capabilities, butterflying, hooding and trunking the vehicle, yep. and then getting them on a test drive, we should be at 30 minutes should be our benchmark. Okay, perfect. Now. In that 30 minutes, now, you, you, like I said, you're, you're one of the top trainers out there. You've been there. You've seen it all. You've done it all. What do you find are some of the most common things that people forget on the demo or the test drive, or like, like common things that salesmen forget to do? You know, just, um, just touch base on the things that they're going to be using most of the time. Um, I, I had a customer, the, uh, well, I, I had a... Uh, a trainee the other day, and actually uh, they lost a vehicle last month because they didn't have it 
in stock, but the competitor did and the programs were going away. So they rushed in and got the vehicle from their competitor and the person worked in the same city as them. So they drove by and, and this salesperson had sold some of her family or friends or what have you. And she came in and she said, hey, I, I don't even know how to work the temperature, right? And so sometimes we just assume that, hey, Ford's had the temperature controls this way for eight years or GM or Honda or whatever we're selling, yep. that we just assume the customer knows. So a lot of times touch base on that. You know, explain what side curtain airbags do, what safety canopy airbags do, knee airbags do, multi-stage airbags do, the convenience of a tilt telescopic steering wheel. I just put that video on Facebook, a live walk around at a dealership, one of my 12 presentations that I did, and it was about 10 minutes. And I've also got some professional uh, walk arounds that I did um, that are going to go to my, my online platform. But, you know, touch base on some of those things. And remember, too, not to talk too much when we're on that, because when, they're, when they've got their hands on the wheel and they, they feel that heated or cooled seat and they feel that temperature on them and they're seeing the blind spot in the mirrors light indicate that there's somebody in their blind spot. They start to, to take mental ownership, and when we keep distracting them with questions or trying to really drive in what we like about the vehicle, we're not really letting them get the experience. It's about setting it up and almost kind of letting the, the customer find their experience. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. You know, it, it, it's, I saw something the other day, and I played it for my salespeople in the last Saturday's meeting, and it was, uh, you'll sell more no matter what industry you're in could be cars could be optical could be it doesn't matter how real estate you'll sell more when you spend more time on the qualifying stage and more time with letting the customer tell you what they're looking for than showing them just listen guys find out what brought them into the dealership find out what they're looking for find out what their hot button is and then let them keep going with it i mean you brought up a ton of great points with that no, absolutely. And, you know, the average customer, 80% of the time, they get a vehicle different than the one they came in to get. Yep. I mean, I you know, so four out of five times. I had a guy come in on, on a Honda Ridgeline and leave with a Honda Fit. Massive difference from going from a pickup truck to a small car. You know, I, I once had a, and I ended up selling the family 10 or 12 vehicles because I hit them at that good stride when the boys started to become teenagers and go yep. off to college. And I got them on leasing. So they would, you know, the husband and the wife would both get a vehicle every two or three years. So, I mean, when you're doing that, that stacks up. But he came in for a, for a focus. Uh, he, was, uh, he was a pastor in a, in a church. And so I started doing a little bit more investigating and found out he only drove like five miles a day. They had just bought a new house that they needed to do landscaping that on. They had two boys that were going off to college where they're going to have to, the, to um, haul their stuff. And he didn't drive that much, so gas wasn't as big of a factor, but he came in for a, for a focus. They had a really aggressive deal on the F-150, so for $20 more a month, he ended up going from an $18,000 focus to a $35,000 F-150 that he fell in love with, felt like a tough guy, and was, yep. you know, and it was, um, it helped him in his life with, uh, with doing some stuff around the house, the weekend warrior projects, with getting the kids, uh, you know, gear up to college for the, for this, you know, for the school year and then bringing it back in the summer. And so sometimes it's investigating more because once again, we control the process, right? You go to McDonald's, the person at the register is controlling the process. Oh, you go 100%. to a restaurant, the host or hostess is controlling the process. So it's our job to control the process and really investigate and spend more time exactly investigating where it doesn't seem like you're backing them into a corner, but really letting them, because when they explain to you what they want, they start to get more of a visual too, because think they might've looked at 12 different makes and two different, you know, three different trim lines and, and all this. So they can get information overload. They can get confused and kind of forget where they were at. So that's why we want to really just, just take everything and minimize it and minimize it and minimize it till we find out what that, what that core is that they're willing to invest in and, and feel like that they're getting a value. So final question before I let you go, and you know I love calling you this, what is some of the gunslingers advice for people out there watching now? If you had one piece of advice that you can give sales reps right now, what would it be? You know, so one piece of advice is educate yourself. First and foremost, watch what the top producers at your dealership are doing. Understand your, your manufacturer, your dealership, your, your managers, your finance department understand the process 
that you are gonna, going to be playing by and implement what you learn along the way. Because when I started growing continuously in sales, I started investing in myself and I was humble enough to know I didn't know any, everything. I was not afraid to watch other top producers. I was always loved getting feedback from my customers. And I, I put the actions in order because, you know, I'm competitive by nature, but the person I compete with the most every day is myself. So I'm always pushing myself to the next limit. Uh, don't ever, don't ever uh, take away from, from friendly competition. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, know that, uh, that when you get better every day, your confidence raises and, and you, you, you feel better. Awesome advice. No, listen, buddy, always a pleasure having you on. I look forward to having you on again next time and we'll talk to you soon. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me as a guest. Good to see you again, Richie. Um, once again, everybody, thanks for having me as a guest. Hopefully I shared some nuggets with you that can help you go to where you want to grow. Noel Walsh, always and forever, conquer you, conquer delay, conquer what you chase. Awesome. Now let's go to one of my favorite people in the whole world, Mr. Dave Castillo, here again with the Richard Bell Institute of Veteran Affairs. What's going on, buddy? Not much. Hello, hello. How are you guys? Good, my friend. Good. Yeah, Rick, so Richie's over in, in, in Florida right now. He's, he's right, probably yeah. on stage as we speak, giving out whatever knowledge he has to, to help people increase their sales. So what do you have going on for us now? So uh, you guys know we've been getting a hold of uh, several veterans associations. Uh, most recently, what we've done is reach out to the Veterans Affairs uh, in several states getting a lot of positive feedback and we're starting the process to create partnerships with um, you know the different states VA offices uh, to help push us out to everybody that goes to their facilities and you know that's a huge uh, impact that's gonna have uh, it's gonna happen for us uh, a lot of movement a lot of moving parts we like we already launched uh, the program January 6th and we're ready to start getting people involved Awesome. So let's go through this. For those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, for those of you who already know this, what happens? Walk me through what happens when a dealership uh, gets a vet from us. What are the benefits so, of why they why they should go to to the veterans program? So what we offer to the dealers is a veteran who obviously has gone through a very extensive training in a particular industry, in the military industry no matter what their job was. We take those previous skills, that discipline, uh, that go-to attitude, and we train them to be specifically for the automotive industry. Now, we train them in different areas. It could be parts, it could be service, operations, sales, you name it, where you're going to be able to fill any of those uh, positions. Uh, the veteran will be fully trained in that particular field, uh, and you will have them to, you know, of course, help grow your business. Uh, a big benefit is, is for whatever reason, let's say, you know, something happens with their family or they just didn't work out. We are able to uh, give them, uh, give you and the dealer a replacement veteran to make sure that we can support the continuity of the program. Awesome. Listen, we look forward to Hearing again next week what goes on, what new advances you've made with it. And guys, reach out. If you guys are looking for employees, you guys are looking for people that are going to do right by your industry and right by your dealership. And more importantly, they're trained properly. Reach out to David, right. reach out to Richie. The Veterans Program is definitely probably one of the best things you guys can invest in right now. David, always a pleasure, my friend, and I'll see you next week. Yes, sir. I'll be here. Thank you. So guys, we had another great show today. I want to thank all you guys for tuning in. Um, we had some new guests tune in. We had some, uh, you know, people who are always on the show come in and start putting comments in. That's the whole point of this show was created to help you guys. Even if we give you one piece of advice, take back to the dealership, it will make a world of difference for you. So again. I want to thank our sponsor today, ShopSmart Autos, where dealers get engagement, driven conquest marketing. We want to thank Mr. Fran Taylor for coming on before on the phone, and we hope the rest of his workshop goes great. And Mr. Richie is giving everybody the information they need to succeed. Uh, Richie, will be back, uh, Richie will be back next Wednesday with me. And we want to thank Mr. Noel Walsh. Guys, always a pleasure. Thanks for tuning in. 
We'll see you next Wednesday.